All right, so I'll pick up where I left off here. The camera actually got so hot it stopped recording. I had to uh, put it in the freezer in my little shop fridge over there to get it to cool down so I could record again. Um, what I do before I leave the driveway every time in this truck is I'll build up full air pressure and I'll step down about as hard as I can on the brakes and hold it for a couple of seconds and that will tell you if a line is going to blow or a wheel cylinder is going to blow or anything else is going to blow. Well, that's what I did when this blew. Um, and it, it sounded like at first it just started hissing and then all of a sudden it just blew it pop with a, a loud pop. And, uh, well, obviously you don't want to do any driving like that. So, um, what it did is it just blew the diaphragm and all the guts off or out of it because it blew the end cap off. And, uh, it just did the crimp on the, the metal ring and the metal failed, I guess, um, over a few years of having 120 PSI applied to it. So, um, I've got a used brake switch spare laying around and, uh, I've already tested it, so I know it works, but I'm going to show you how you can test one before you put it on because uh, I have gotten some bad ones that were brand new. So what I've got here is my used brake switch and uh, some brand new Packard connectors, which um, I am going to do a video on how to assemble these for you guys at some point. Um, but what I did is I... I put the uh, the brand new connector together and stuck it in there just to give uh, the, my multimeter something there to to grab because I'm doing this alone so what you want to do is take a, a multimeter that works um, I'd say a quality meter but really you can use a cheap meter and achieve the same results as long as it works so what you want to do is set it to um, their diode test or continuity tester and touch your leads together make sure it works then put one probe in each side of here and uh, it helps to hold them sideways or get something that will hold them sideways and then you want to take a something that's soft soft-ish like a I use a piece of plastic DOT airline here and just put it up inside here and it needs to be soft because you're touching a rubber diaphragm in there. And you just put a little bit of pressure on it. And you can feel it spring there. And I'm holding it. And my apparently my lines aren't connected here. So let's see. Yep. That's what you want. And then you can let go. And it stops. And then do that a few times. Make sure it works consistently. And that's what you're looking for. So this switch is good. I'm going to put this switch on. And uh, this whole repair is actually pretty simple to change the switch out. All you need is a, a 5 8 socket and a ratchet to uh, remove the skid plate. And a, I believe it's 3 quarter for that. It might be 11 16 uh, but now I got to pull those little connectors out of there without damaging them because they're brand new and um, the Packard connectors are like two bucks a piece. So if you damage one piece, you can't get the little pieces and parts separately. So damage one piece and you just throw away two dollars. Anyway, so. Pretty much all you need to know, I suppose. Um, I use a liquid soft set thread sealant on here called Rector Seal. I've mentioned it in other videos before. Uh, I prefer it to Teflon tape because uh, you put the thread sealer on here, you know it's going to seal. It's not like Teflon tape where you can thread it in and it'll push it off the threads and it may or may not seal. Um, but anyway, as I was. As I was saying, you got your two um, 5 8 bolts here. Take them out, and they're pretty short. Um, if you use too long ones, this skid plate will never, uh, never tighten up because the holes actually go 
through a small bracket and then into the air pack body itself. Uh, so you got also got to be careful tightening them because it's the body of the air pack is cast and you can pull the threads out really easily. Um, but all you've got to do is pull the skid plate off, then back your switch out and uh, thread your new one in, tighten it up, and plug it back in. And it does not matter which wire you plug into which terminal. Um, there's a hot side and the other side goes to the brake lights and all the switch is doing is connecting the two so you can hook it up either way and it doesn't make a damn bit of difference so um, anyway that's just something I wanted to mention a, a little little procedure before you get on the road every time might save you a, a whole lot of trouble and heartache and uh, real simple to fix your brake light switch if you're not getting any brake lights or if it blows apart like mine did here so uh, have a good one thank you guys for watching uh, if you haven't like subscribe share it all really helps my channel out I'm trying to grow the channel help you guys out so uh we'll see you on the next one thanks guys